friends, Dr. Manette Riordan here. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette, and I am coming to you today from Loveland, Colorado, and it is a cool and breezy. Oh, it's not showing me the temperature this morning, which means it's probably extra chilly outside, but it's nice and warm here in my studio, and I am excited for another day of play and another day of celebrating National Poetry Month where we're looking at poetry as a way to deepen our own self-reflection, connect to ourselves. I have a beautiful poem by Derek Walcott, Love After Love, to share with all of you today. And I'll share that in just a little bit. I'll also be using some collage materials, a picture of myself for this particular page. And I highly, highly encourage you to get comfortable using pictures of yourself in your own artwork. When we're faced with looking at ourselves, we get to be in deeper relationship with ourselves and the truth of who we are. And to me, the first step to self-love is always self-acceptance. And if I'm not looking at myself and really just seeing what is there and what is to love or just accepting what is in the moment, my journey can be a little more emotional fraught with some self-judgment and criticism and that's not how I choose to live my life and it's a lifelong journey to get to the place of self-love for sure. So those are some of the themes that we're going to talk about but first I want to show you how I would make an envelope out of transparent paper to capture the poem in my journal. I'm finding that I want to tuck all these poems into my journal and I'm looking for different creative ways to do that. So today we're gonna make a really simple, no measure envelope for tucking pages into our journal and attach that to our journal. journal. Good morning, Tori. Thank you for joining me, so glad you're here. So let me go ahead and change my screen and we're gonna dive right in and get started. Thank you so much for joining me live. Thank you also to all of you who are catching the replay of this and other videos, be sure to subscribe so you get notified when I go live if you haven't subscribed yet. Also be sure, it really helps me a ton, if you would just hit that little like button on the videos that you do like and you get something out of so we can encourage other people to watch and keep this channel growing. So I've got my big Uhu glue stick, I've got some scissors, I have a pad of vellum here, as well. Um, I think I just got this at the office supply store one day. I just happened to see it and it's mostly transparent and then somewhere I also have a pencil and that's all we're going to need to create these quick and easy envelopes before we dive into our art journaling practice. And I wanted to just share this tag that I made yesterday after our creative play session. These were just all the <clears throat> excuse me, bits and pieces that were lying around on my table and they just came together into another really beautiful little collage called Flights of Imagination. And it almost made me wonder if Flights of Imagination is the name of this journal. I don't often name my journals, but since this one is definitely going to have that theme of poetry and self-exploration, I thought it might be a way to sort of frame my journey. I even, I love this picture of this woman. So this tag is going to get connected right into the front of my journal. So I'm having fun adding things in to my journal as well as working inside the, the pages. And I just stuck some collage paper. This is some newsprint that I had painted on the back side. And when I did that, I wasn't really paying attention. But what I loved was that when I flip this page, that all those colors kind of match together. So was it, here was the first way that I attached a poem was I just kind of taped it in, which I really liked. And this is also going to, I'm just going to use some washi tape and attach this tag so it's still gonna flip open. And this page I think is gonna become a title page for my journal about flights of imagination. There might be some writing, so something to come there. But I was happy with the way that the page from yesterday turned out 
And when I was looking at this page, I started thinking about how do I want to attach the poem? Because I want to make sure, good morning, Judy, good morning, Yvonne, go make sure that I remember what the inspiration was. And I just happened to have a piece of vellum just lying around on my desk. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to have a transparent envelope in here that would allow me to see the poem? And this one had some of that uh, gorgeous tangling on it. So I had this photocopy of the poem. <laughs> Thank you, Tori. I know I bounce around a lot from idea to idea, but they all do tend to have a common thread and theme that flows through. Good morning, Marian. Great to see you as well. So I love using the, the vellum. It's just slightly transparent. And so I'm going to show you how I made this just quick little envelope first, and then we'll dive into our Poem Love After Love by Derek Walcott and a simple art journal page. This is also just attached with some washi tape. You could use masking tape, painter's tape, paper tape, pretty much any tape would do. But I'm still so in love with my journey with Mary Oliver's poem, The Journey Yesterday. So what I want to do is just grab a sheet of this vellum. This is just inexpensive, eight and a half by 11 sheets of vellum in a pad. I think I got it at Office Depot or Staples. I always like the, the Statler brand of supplies, has nice supplies. And I wanted something that would fit inside the journal. And I didn't have a ruler at hand, and that's what I figured out. I really didn't need to measure. So yesterday, I made one that fit vertically in the page and opens out this way and tuck that poem in. So maybe today, I'll make one that's a little bit smaller and might tuck at the bottom of the page and we could even make it a long skinny envelope with an opening at the top and it depends is my so yesterday I didn't measure so this is going to be kind of a nice long skinny can we make that work let's see actually that's going to be just about right so this one's going to be nope I want to show you the one I did yesterday because I think it was super easy and it fits so well in this journal going this direction. So I would use whatever size journal that you're working in and still make the envelope out of eight and a half by 11 paper. It doesn't need to fill the whole journal. This envelope will end up being a little bit too big to go this direction. So it made more sense to have it go this direction. And what I did was simply to start by folding that piece of paper in half. And this became the bottom of my envelope. And it fits just right on this page, as you can see, right? So I've got the two sides of my page here. So if I wanted to trim it up a little bit more, I could do the same thing going this direction. And I do think I do want one going this way. I keep changing my mind this morning, but it's nice to change them up. So the size doesn't matter. And what I love about this process is it's fast, it's easy, and it gets the envelope made. I also love that it has that little bit of transparency so that when you do tuck things inside of the envelope, they're still peeking through. And envelopes in art journals, I've talked about this before, are great for tucking extra bits of collage, little secret notes to yourself. It doesn't have to be transparent. So what I did was simply to kind of eyeball where I wanted the sides of this to be. And I'm using just the line of the paper underneath. And then I kind of continued that line. If you're somebody who needs a straight edge, by all means, use a ruler. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to trim this edge of the paper away from our bottom fold.
and I'm going to cut just to the inside of that pencil line because I don't need that pencil line so I want to make that disappear so I'm going to cut just to the inside of that. I might end up having to trim or refold differently the bottom as well. So now we have the front of our envelope and I'm going to make a little bit of a fold in that because that's going to be the, the fold. So this is going to be the final size here of my envelope. And if you like your edges nice and neat, the vellum creases really nicely, but you could also use a bone folder for this process as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim that top edge so that my back, actually I'm going to make it just a tiny bit shorter, I think. Is that right? I'm trying to remember what I did yesterday. You'd think I would be smart and like write my own instructions down. But this is how we figure things out, is just by sort of going for it. Nope, that's exactly what I did. So now I already have my little flappy bits here, right? So we're almost there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut these little edges at an angle. Don't need to measure them. This is to make our folds nice and neat. And those flaps on this one are pretty wide. I could also trim those flaps and have them not be so wide. But this is a great way to just sort of Create your own envelopes, make them the size that you need. Okay, so now this one turned out a little bit different than the other one. I also want to maybe straighten this up a little bit. And I cut the flaps on the wrong side, so we're just going to make it up as we go along. The flaps actually go on the front of the envelope, so I'm going to flip that around. And then all we have to do is take our glue stick and glue those flaps down, and we're going to have an envelope. And the envelope can have a closure at the top. It could be open at the top. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to have some nice wide flaps on here. So I'm just going to fold those in, get those folds nice and tight on there. Nobody's going to see these and notice that they're not perfect, right? So it doesn't really matter. I love using handmade collage paper also as an envelope. Makes great envelopes, but there was something about the transparency of this one that I loved. So because I folded this one the wrong way, maybe I'll do another one and make sure I get it right. I'm going to show you a different kind of envelope that actually is going to act a little bit more like a pocket. So I could leave it like this and I have this nice little opportunity to tuck things in. Again, what I love about this is the transparency of it where I can still see things through. And once you have any kind of envelope or pocket, you have a couple of choices. You could glue it down to the paper, or you could do what I did and use washi tape to adhere it to the side here. So a couple of different ways to use that, but also if I'm going to make a pocket, I love coming in and maybe just cutting a little bit of an oval out of that pocket. Smaller scissors are easier to do this with. And now I have this nice envelope or pocket that I can easily tuck things into, get them back out of, and I can store extra paper in my journal. So there's a simple pocket. And let's try that envelope one more time. I love messing up on camera. What a great way to start the day. I just keep telling myself that. Okay, so let's try this again. I always get my flaps backwards. And this isn't even quite in half. It's okay because I am going to trim that up. So again, I'm going to, and I actually might even just 
bold this and not even use a pencil to draw it because I want to just measure where I want it to go. So we get our flaps marked all the way down. That's even faster than the pencil. And I'm making it just a little bit shorter than the page because I want to make sure that my book is going to close. So now when I open that page up, we have our lines. <laughs> it's, it proves it's live. That's so true, Mary, and it proves it's live. Okay, so this is the front. There we go. This is the front of the envelope, right? So I'm going to want this part to be the part that folds back over the back of the envelope. So the back is going to be a little bit shorter than the front. This is also where the flaps are going to go on the front. So I'm also going to fold that flap over just a little bit. And you can find a million templates online for making envelopes with hand-drawn templates, but I'm just a go for it, can I figure it out kind of girl, right? And I, you know, I, as you guys know, I am not a perfectionist by any means. So again, I want that back is just going to be even with my top. So now we have a nice foldable envelope with a flap like it's supposed to be. But as you can see, we have way too much paper. So this is the back of the envelope is the bottom of the sheet of paper. So I'm going to trim these squares off. And you could 100% use recycled envelopes from junk mail or fun pretty envelopes with stamps that people have sent you. There are so many ways to create envelopes. So again I'm going to come in and I'm just going to slightly curve the back of that flap and I'm also going to just trim the corners off of these, the reason you cut the corners is so that they fold neatly and you don't have big bulky folds, but you don't need huge folds. Come on, Diego. And Diego needs to come and say good morning and play this morning. So I'm going to cut this one just a little bit. And this is for my art journal, for my personal work. It does not need to be perfect. All right, I got a drive-by hello from Diego, and off he went. Okay, so this is the back of my envelope. We're going to fold those flaps in. We do want our envelope to lie nice and flat, so we want those all those folds to be nice and flat. You could trim these if you wanted. I'm going to put a bunch of glue stick in there. Be generous with your glue stick. And we just needed to get the flaps and the folds in the right place to have an envelope. So you can see there's really no difference between making an envelope or making a pocket other than, grab my bone folder here, other than getting the flap folding in the right place. That was the only difference that it made. And love using my bone folder, then I can see where I need a little more glue stick in here. Bone folders are great for burnishing down glue stick as well. And also can see where I need to work on this fold a little bit. So we just make sure that envelope closes nice and neatly. So again, on the back, it's not pretty, but who cares? Nobody's going to see it. So now I have this secret little envelope that I can do a couple of things with, right? So I could 
Again, do what I did here, attach it, but I could actually glue this whole envelope into the page and have it be secret. And it's an advantage sometimes to have it go this way so you can access it a little bit more easily from the side. So there's a few different ways that we could use these envelopes in our art journals. Get all cleaned up from all those scrappy bits of paper. I don't know about you, I cannot work with too many scrappy bits around. I get overwhelmed. But so now I have both an envelope and a simple pocket that'll end up getting added to this journal. I think this is going to be one of my favorite ways for adding poems to the page. So just a fun little aside there. A little messy aside, but we got it done. So let's move on to our poem today. Put that vellum away. And I'm so glad I stumbled across that pad of vellum and I'm having fun figuring out different ways to use it. <clears throat> so this is an absolutely beautiful poem by Derek Walcott. I've made a photograph of it from the book 110 Poems of Love and Reflection. And when I reread this poem this morning, I thought how interesting it is to look at this poem in connection with the poem yesterday from Mary Oliver, and there's some similar themes, but a different focus. They're almost like two parts of the same journey. So Mary Oliver talked to us yesterday about the new voice, which we recognized as our own, about you know, striding out into the wilderness about deciding to save the only life that we can save. So there was a lot of interesting moving away from what's been holding us back and towards ourself. And Derek Walcott's poem is really about the moment when we arrive at that place. Love After Love by Derek Walcott. The time will come when, with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart, Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your image from the mirror. Sit. Feast on your life. I'm going to read that one more time. It's such a beautiful poem. The time will come when, with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your image from the mirror. Sit feast on your life. Love After Love by Derek Walcott. Yeah, it does, doesn't it, Terry? It's so beautiful and so powerful. And when I started to really read this poem and to think about feasting on my life and to think about the imagery of greeting myself arising at my own door, seeing my own face in the mirror, my first thought was that this really called for using a picture of myself. So I went back to the last photo shoot that I had done because she did such a good job of capturing so many fun and silly photos of me as well as uh, other ones. And you can tell everything was in full bloom. This was in California, the nasturtiums and the bougainvillea. And it was a beautiful, sunny day. And this, to me, had that feeling of feasting on my life, right? Like I'm wrapped up looking at myself. 
And I wanted to talk about this idea of looking at ourselves and using images of ourselves in our work. I think it's so essential to honor this reflection of ourself, to be in acceptance and celebration of who we are in the moment. And self-love can be challenging to be eradicating self-criticism and judgment and blame and shame simply starts with acceptance and compassion. And I think what I really love about this poem is this idea of when I feast on my life, I can look at it from a little bit of distance and have compassion for all the versions of Manette that I've been. And to me, this is such a beautiful, beautiful poem. And it can be challenging to work with images of ourselves to find a photograph that we love. But I want to really challenge you today to find a photo of yourself that you love and to use it. So I've got an image of myself. I've got the poem. And don't ask me why, but these puffins were sitting here from the other day. I've used one of these guys. I just love them. And there's something sort of playful about them. But I particularly like this guy. And what if this was a reflection of me looking at myself? So somehow there's some fun, playful symmetry. And when I think of this idea of feasting, it kept feeling like a celebration, right? When I think about Rumi's poem, The Guest House, or Mary Oliver's poem of saving our life, you know, the only life we can our own, to me, this one is about coming home to myself and coming home always being a celebration. And I think I left my little scissors on my other desk over there. I actually have three places that I work in my big basement. I have my office space and my office desk, which is in the corner over there. And then I have a huge art table in the other half of my studio. And so I'm moving around often between the three spaces and I had to sit through a, a meeting yesterday and that's when I made the, the tag I showed at the beginning um, because I was sitting in a meeting and I often make art when I'm sitting in online meetings. It helps me to sit still and stay present whether I draw or color or paint or cut images or collage. And I usually tell people what I'm doing if I'm on Zoom and they see me looking down in a meeting. I will let people know that I'm 100% present, but that if I keep my hands busy, it actually helps my mind to focus. All right, so we're going to get this little guy cut out. There was also maybe some something interesting about the, the colors here and how these colors go together. And again, sometimes these pages just come together really fast. I'm kind of being drawn to this, get that one put back together, this orange and blue background here a little bit. And he's such a silly, such a silly, funny little face. And he's actually quite a bit bigger than this picture. And almost this whole thing would just about fit in my journal. So what if we kept this really, really simple? Which means that I'm actually covering up all those pretty painty pages, which I'm not sure I want to do. And for me, being out in nature always feels like a feast and a celebration. All right, this doesn't feel complete, but it feels like it's coming together pretty quickly. It's interesting now these sort of look like the tops of maybe some city buildings over here or something. I'm not sure what's happening in the background. And I kind of, so I'm paying attention here to when this gets folded, it's going to fold that image in half, which is fine. 
and even if I want a little bit more of that color to show at the top. And if you don't have a picture that you love to use, take one. It's the best use of cell phones, right, is the ability to take pictures quickly and to let those pictures or be able to print those pictures at home or ask someone nearby to take a picture for you. So I'm just sort of sitting with, is this really it? Could it really be this simple? And sometimes it can be this simple. It doesn't need to be any more complicated. I think because this poem feels like such that celebration. And I'm thinking I'm going to want to write some of the words of the poem along the edge of this image. And just before I commit, right, I have other painty pages in here as well. So this is an interesting magazine image of a child sort of peeking out in the background. So that adds some interest and mystery to who is that face out there in the background, which reminds me I had this other image that I cut out this morning. So it's almost like I'm feasting on all these different memories and stories of my life. So that feels pretty interesting and like that uh, more of an explanation and journey through the story. So that's a possibility. I don't think I have as many of those images in here. So there's an interesting as well. It's a page from an old Saturday evening post. So now we have more of those women. So feeling like history, but nope, that's not quite it. Doesn't quite fit. It's one of the, the things that sometimes I really love about working in a junk journal like this, where I put a variety of different types of things in here. That's a fun image as well, is that it gives me options. But all of a sudden, I think this is the spread that's speaking to me. This looks like maybe a piece of jelly print paper. Um, but this journal is made a lot out of just uh, old pieces of newsprint. And maybe I want her to show in the background a little bit more. So now we start to see stories of past, stories of now. We've got this puffin, which I, I think they just, they're so curious. They're such curious birds. And they sort of this magnanimous kind of looking on a little bit larger than life here. But what an interesting story. I'm sitting feasting on my life. All right, I like it. I'm going to get these glued down. And then today I was thinking I wanted to use a tag to attach the poem. So that's where I'm going to go next. Again, just simply working with my glue stick, you could 100% use matte medium, but when I'm not using paint, I love glue stick for intuitive collage. It's fast, it's movable. And I'm just going to make sure I really get the, the center of this way down so that I get a nice fold in my journal and it closes well. I can just fold that over or trim it later. This image is so interesting. I can't tell if it's, it looks like a child, but it's really hard to tell. And I loved this one of the woman with the book and the horn. She's been floating around all week waiting to 
get used and I trimmed her away from her background this morning and she somehow is part of this story. And so is this crazy puffin. So I'm always amazed by these collages and they just so tell a story of their own. And I never feel like I need to know what that story is like right in that very moment that I'm okay letting the story unfold over time. So even this morning when I came back to the butterfly from yesterday and was adding a little bit more to this one, you know, I start to see where different parts of the story unfold or take on different meaning. So just inviting you when you're working this way to not get caught up in, I need to know what it means right now. And I'm feeling like this needs one little more something something, and I don't know what that's going to be. So I've got just a box of little small images here. There's a sweet little mouse. So I really love this if I'm sitting feasting on my life. I had such a beautiful relationship with my grandmother, and if I'm feasting on all the different parts of my life and that experience of unconditional love came so much from my grandmother. I also loved the beach as a kiddo. I grew up in San Antonio, Texas, and we often went down to Port Aransas. My aunt and uncle had a house there, and so sometimes the whole family would go. So I'm just going to cut her away from the background and see how she looks. Plus, I grew up with dogs, always had dogs in my life until my last dog passed away. That was a hard day, man. Um, and everybody in my family, all, all sides had dogs. My mom and my dad, when they were married, had kennels and raised German short hair pointers. So dogs and just animals in general have always been a huge part of my life. It's probably why they show up over there. So how's everyone doing? What are you guys working on this morning? Anyone attempting to make an envelope? Tori, how you doing over there? Sometimes when those tears come up in response to a poem, I love to just take to my journal and do some writing first before I turn to art making. But oftentimes when I'm working with intuitive collage, I have to do the writing on the other end. So I'm just taking my time to fussy cut this little sweet image out I think this was from a Highlights magazine. Remember Highlights from the doctor's office or the dentist's office, and somebody left a bunch of old ones in our little library. Okay, that feels complete. Now we have this. This feels like a feast to me, like sitting and feasting on my life. I love it. Came together really fast. And they don't always, as you guys have seen over the, the months and months, that uh, sometimes it takes a lot longer for things to, to come together. Watercoloring, definitely going to journal, beautiful, I love that. So loving this simple collage. And I want it to say right on the page, feast on your life. That feels really important to plant those words on the page 
maybe with a smaller pen, not that big fat one. Let's see, maybe we'll try this one. And I love this idea of feast on your life. And this would have been a really fun one to do with all family images or portraits of um, photographs of myself throughout the ages, which I didn't have access to in the moment. So I think it's important to use what we have in the moment. So I've got that feast on your life there just so that I remember. But I'm wanting to make sure that I always also incorporate the poem. It doesn't even have to be on the same page necessarily, but I definitely want it in the book. And I'm thinking maybe this one is going to get its own page or it could get a tag as well that the tag can then be attached to the page. And these tags are just a little bit tall for this book. So I'm thinking a tag in here. And the cool thing about adding a tag I am definitely accepting nominations for poems I was going to ask. Um, for recommendations for poems from others as well. So I will find that one. Thank you, Marion. I knew you would have some suggestions for me as, um, as we go along. So definitely, let me just write that one down. Seven of Pentacles. I do like Marge Piercy's work. And we can do that one tomorrow. So yes, poems are absolutely welcome. So I think I am going to maybe shorten this tag. And one of the reasons I want to shorten it is because it's fun to have things that are, you know, different heights in our book and show differently. Plus it doesn't need to be quite that big. So I'm just going to cut a little bit off the bottom of this. If you need it to be neat, by all means, use a paper cutter. The other thing I love about using tags is that the poem can go on one side, and then I have a place to journal on the other side, right? So this makes a nice way to just add a little bit of extra space to the page, because this spread definitely deserves some journaling attention so that's what's going to happen here but I want this I want this poem in here and I wanted to have a pretty background and actually I'm looking I was messing around with watercolor as you can see making a big old mess and I could actually use a piece of watercolor keeper that's already painted instead of the tag as well. It's not quite the right size there. I don't get maybe quite enough of that color. So I'm going to poke around. I've got tons of bits of collage paper sitting here. All right. And this was a label that I accidentally printed in the printer. And it makes great collage paper. And you can even use this paper, this uh, plastic backing off of labels makes great little mini palette pages as well that can, then can get used as collage too. And the nice thing about this, and that one isn't quite long enough, so let's just stick that back on there for now. Carefully. is it makes it really easy to glue it on. So printing on labels is a really fun way to make your own kind of sticky backed label paper. And then I'm just going to trim that up.
Remember not to use your good scissors when you're cutting sticky paper like this because it definitely gums them up. I'm going to stick that one back on there for later. And now we have some color and marks down on this page already. And I still have like old uh, sheets of like return address labels and full sheet sticky labels for shipping left over from when I had my publishing company and I sold that in 2010. So I am learning to use up office supplies in all kinds of different ways. So I definitely want this to feel like it belongs to this page a little bit better. So I'm happy with these marks, but I want to get some more color going in that page. I'm going to trim this up even a little bit more. And I'm going to want this to really stand out on that. I like that, but I think this needs some of these pinks and oranges on here. So let's maybe just do a little bit of color. I've been having fun with this metallic orange and maybe a tiny little pop of yellow and maybe a little pop of pink and we're just going to have a little fun painting this up. This was like three projects in one today and um, sometimes I really love moving through projects really fast when you know I know that I don't have lots of time like it's fun to just how much can I do in the time that I do have today? All right, this is not wanting to come out, but I know there's a lot of paint in there. There we go. Trying not to get too much paint on the tag. So I'm just putting that paint around in a few different places, just like I would if I were painting, getting an abstract page started. And again, it's so nice to just have something to respond to. And I've got a brayer here, so let's just use that brayer to come in and start moving some of that color around. Definitely going to want some more of that pink on there. And again, just cleaning off that brayer on whatever paper I have because this will all get used for something else. I want some of that white to still show through. And I have disappeared my baby wipes somewhere. I know there, you should guys should see around me, there's just like piles of stuff everywhere. And I'm going to maybe even just push all of this back a little bit bring in maybe a few more pops of yellow and maybe even go all the way back. Interesting, so the um, ink from my inkjet printer definitely did not like getting wet. So it's starting to smear a little bit. And I like the white on there, so I may even come back and put a little more white on there. So we'll see how this is starting to look. So it's a little darker than I want it to be. My page is a little brighter. So I'm going to just come in with a that uh, brayer and put white over the whole thing and just call it done. Definitely going to do some journaling on the back of this. And we're almost done. It's amazing how much we got done in an hour today. Woohoo! Always happy when that happens. And I love the, the texture that the brayer creates when you paint with a texture. It definitely is different than a brush or a scraper. So you get very different sort of magical things that happen. So it's a fun tool to have on hand and play with. And I'm looking for another piece of. So I'm going to just pull some of that paint back off of there. 
again, I have these sheets of collage paper around. These are all leftovers from my found objects class. And so I just keep layering paint up on top of them so that they become more and more interesting. All right, and the white was exactly what it needed. So we're going to get this attached. Trying not to get too much paint on this guy, but I think I'm failing epically at that. Doesn't matter. If it really bugged me, I could print a clean copy. I'm grateful to have a printer at home. I know not everyone does, but you can often use the printer at your local library. I know a lot of people in our Mindful Patterns membership they print at their local library, so collect up a few of the poems that you want to print, or you can always send them to a FedEx store or an office supply store. And then I'm going to poke the hole so I can bring that hole back. And I'm going to poke it both ways because I want to get rid of those little bits of paper that are sticking up. I want them on the back side, not the front side. And there we have a tag on the page, and it always just becomes this nice little, you know, secret added addition. And I have some ribbon that was the cats were playing with that was floating around on the page. That's what I used on this tag as well, but I think it's too shiny. So, oh, look, here's a little... There's amazing things floating around on my table. So use what's in front of you. So this is a piece of sari ribbon. I brought a, bought a big bunch of sari ribbon, I think maybe off of, just off of Amazon, maybe eBay, I can't remember. Um, and I love this sort of neutral color. And it's easy to paint this stuff up if you take watered down uh, acrylic or the Derwent ink tents, you can make them any color you want, but I kind of like this little bit of just satiny color on there. All right, and I, my friend Andrea and I have such um, a fun conversation about this because I love all the sort of hangy bits and beads and feathers and all kinds of things hanging off and out of my journal and she does not but I love when I have all these happy little bits I think it makes the the journal interesting and fun and now we're going to attach this baby here or here I think maybe it's going to go here actually the colors go a little bit better so now we've got some of those same colors here so different color story and then when we open it up there's yet another color story so i love that plus i already oh no this one does not have the washi tape that was the one before nope i like it there so i'm going to use my paper tape instead of washi tape this is another one of my favorite supplies and literally, this tape is made out of paper. And to activate the tape, you just get it wet with water. I've got it sealed shut here with some washi tape. Um, and it's just, it's extra sticky, so it makes things stay strong on the page, which I always really appreciate. Don't put your claws in me, mister. No, sir. Somebody's trying to get my attention down here, so I'm just going to straighten this one up a little bit. And you can use a spray bottle or just a paintbrush to get this wet. So I'm going to just use my paintbrush and some water. And what I love about the, the paper tape is when it goes over to the other side of the page, then it will um, be ready to paint on. Marion, that's so funny. I was going to email you um, later today. I keep meaning to email you because the registration page is up and open. And give me two seconds, and I will look up those dates for you. I think it's the second weekend in 
October. But let me just confirm that for you. And so I'm just going to fold over the, the page here. We haven't started promoting it yet, but it's um, we got the page all up and ready to go. All right. So now this paper is super paintable and it's just going to get painted into this page and not feel so separate. Um, if I wanted to, I could also come over and add some of the colors over here, but it doesn't bug me to have that row of, uh, it's not there, Andrea, or Marion, it's not on Andrea's site. It is, um, we have a shared teachable for the creative stretch. I think it's uh, creativestretch.teachable.com. I can't remember if it has a the in it right now or not, but it's there and I'm happy to send you the, the link. But let me just tell you right now. October 12 to 15 are the dates. October 12 to 15 are the dates. And the Creative Stretch Retreat is an annual retreat that I do with my friend Andrea Shebelu. I think we've settled on October is our favorite time to do it. It's in her beautiful studio in San Jose, California. It's uh, a ton of fun. We love collaborating. And our theme this year is Love and Magic. And we both fell in love with the book uh, Big Love. No trying to remember the name of it, by Scott Stabile, I'm forgetting the name, and Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. So we're taking the, some themes from a couple of books that we really love and combining those into a retreat all about love and magic. So I'm super, super excited about that. And here is our fun page. So we got a lot done today. We huh, unintentionally learned how to make a pocket how to make an envelope. We worked with this gorgeous poem, Love After Love by Derek Walcott. We added a tag to our book, and I do need to come in and snip this because I've got a different size page on the back, and I want my tag to be able to open on the other side. There we go. And this is a collage all about feasting on my life. So thank you, as always, for joining me. I will not be live tomorrow. I have a, a friend coming to stay overnight, so I probably will not be here tomorrow morning. So instead, I will be back on Friday morning this week instead of Thursday with all of you. And we will look at the Seven of Pentacles by Marge Piercy. So have a beautiful rest of your day. As always, thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Minette.